with React 18, we also got use transition hook, which we can use to treat some functionality as less urgent. So imagine this scenario. In your app, there is some kind of user interaction which triggers some heavy computation. For example, user types something in the input, and based on the input value, you filter, I don't know, 20,000 items. Here's the thing, while the computation is taking place, it will actually block the UI. Basically, our app will be less responsive. And as you can imagine, that's not a good thing. Ask yourself, as a user, what's more annoying, waiting for some data to arrive or tirelessly clicking on the button? So use transition just allows us to mark certain functionality as less urgent, which in turn prevents the whole UI blocking thing. With that said, like I already mentioned before, React is fast by default. So even though this is a very cool addition to the library, it has very specific use cases, and most likely it's not something you'll use immediately in all your applications. And once we're familiar with the general concept now let's take it out for a test drive. In this video, we will heavily rely on array.from method. So if you're not familiar with it, or you need to jog your memory, please utilize this JavaScript Nuggets video where I cover everything in great detail. As far as the location in the app JSX, we want to grab the starter from 0 for React 18. Again, 0 for React 18. This is what we should see on the screen. Basically, there's going to be an input and we'll have some items below. And if we navigate to the file, you'll see that I have two state values. I have one for text, so that's for the input. And I also have one for items, which initially is just empty array. So in here, I have the form. Everything is awesome. I have the handle change. I also have heading four right below the form. So this is where we're displaying the items. At the moment, they're empty. There's nothing there. And as far as handle change, well, I have set text. I'm just grabbing the value. All of this is awesome. However, let's imagine that I attempt to do something very interesting. First, I'll create new items using array.from, and I want to construct a very big array. Therefore, I provide here an object with a length property of 5,000. And then the second one is the callback function, which gets invoked for every item. Now, I don't care about the actual item. I do care about the index. And yes, this is the case where I'll cheat a little bit and I'll set up the key as the index. Now, inside of it, I also want to return an image, which essentially is that nice and cute Vite SVG. So remember the public folder I talked about at the very, very beginning in React Fundamentals? Since it's in a public, I can just go forward slash and vite SVG. Then once I create that array, the 5,000 items, basically just a bunch of vite SVG images, I want to set it equal to my new items. And if everything is still fast, we can also slow down the CPU. Because it's one thing to work in development with a fast computer, but it's totally different if you're somewhere out there with spotty Wi-Fi struggling with, I don't know, iPhone 3 or whatever. So the way we can slow down the CPU, so again, we're not talking about the network. We can also do it with a network. In this case, I want to slow down the CPU. We go with Performant Insights. Let me make this sucker bigger. And then notice here, it says no throttling. I can actually go with CPU and I can make it, I don't know, four times slower, something along those lines. Now, let me make this one again smaller, and you'll notice something interesting. Since I'm running this pretty much on every keystroke, you'll actually notice that my input is gonna be somewhat slow. So I haven't saved the file yet, so notice, I can nicely type and everything's awesome. However, the moment I save the file, and the moment I create those 5,000 items every time user presses something in the input, you'll right away notice that it's very slow. So I typed 
few characters and notice how long it took for them to show on the screen. And it's going to be a little bit faster once we already have all the items and all that, since, of course, we're not changing the path. But hopefully you can see the issue. So we need to somehow fix this, where I still want a fast response here in the input. And then this one, the new items, well, that can happen in the background. So let's try this one out, where I want to go to imports, and I want to grab use and then transition. So that's the hook I'm looking for. Then I want to go right after the items and I want to invoke it. And it's getting back two things. It's getting back is pending and the start transition. So the slow function, this one over here, or functionality, let's maybe be more precise. We want to place that in the start transition and then is pending will use effectively to showcase that something has happened. So we're going to go here with const and then is and pending and then comma and we'll say start transition. Now, like I said, that is equal to my use transition. And I think I'll make this one smaller. It's somewhat annoying here. So, yep, we invoke them. Then let's go to a handle change and let's set up that start transition. And now let's pass both of these things inside of it. Now we do need to set up the function here first. So let's do that. Let's grab these two suckers. So the array with 5,000 items and the set new items. Good. And now let's scroll down a little bit. And where we have the items, I actually want to look for the is pending, the value of is pending. And then if we're loading, basically if it's true, then we'll display loading dot, dot, dot. And once we're good to go, then we'll display the items. So right before the heading four, let's open up the curlies. I'll go with is pending and I'm going to go with ternary operator. So if it's true, what do I want to showcase? Let me go here with heading four and then loading dot, dot, dot. Okay. Awesome. And then if it's false, basically once we're done, then we want to display those items. Let me cut this one out, copy and paste. And once I save, you'll notice something interesting that now the response in the input is going to be much faster. And notice we have this loading. So essentially something we want to keep fast, which is the response to our user is still going to happen fast. However, the slow functionality is going to happen in the background.